for accountability for my actions. But you know what? You live and you learn. Yeah. Unfortunately, my learning has to be on on television. It has to be televised. This. When she and like a BB moment, which is like a beautiful black moment. Do we get any of those in this episode? Black. We have a chaotic five moment of the chaotic five moment. Yeah. And you're watching Black Fi Reality. Black Fi Daddy. And those who love us. Hello, you are watching and are listening to the Black Fi Reality Podcast, a podcast for Black Fi Baddies those who love us and i am so excited because for one (laughs) america (laughs) finally has i kissed a girl (laughs) we were behind but we got there a long time for sure i don't know why why it took so long to get on hulu because the boys are the boys are on there now yes we just started getting into it by the way i have a guest for this episode guys my guest today is the very own priya of i kiss a girl hey i am so thrilled to have you on but yeah i thought it would be like a whole year out and i was like i don't care i'll wait for however long but you alerted me no because guys i was really like when the show first came out like this was like the one of the one of the shows that i was consistently watching and oh. i was like oh my like, god no way they had this opinion of me <laughs> look i think our opinion changed i re-listened to all of the episodes and we were like really trying to figure out because i think you and nay's edit was so weird let's just put it out there yeah i'm gonna agree with you on that one i just i didn't like it personally um i feel like a lot of context was missing in regards to a lot of things not just me and nay but to a lot of the cast as well so um yeah and we're gonna address it (laughs) let's address it let's go i'm ready how long has it been since you actually finished filming the reunion um, will say. So this, like, it was the very beginning of October that we finished filming okay. of 2023. So now we're coming into that. So right now we were probably like either in isolation or it was our first day. I can't quite remember, but yeah, we were in Italy for sure at this time last year. And it has been a complete whirlwind as you know but yeah it's, it's definitely exciting because i know now that season season two of like is the boy is being filmed currently okay see do we know anything about i kissed a girl season two well i'm hoping if they make if they make an i kissed a boy season two there's gonna be an i kissed a girl season there better two. be they better be because i'm gonna be there watching and you know what I wish them all the best. (laughs) Yes, yes. One thing that I love doing, obviously, as you probably know from the recaps, I love having actual queer POC reality stars on here to talk about it because they can at Mm. least have the experience of like they were in the hot seat at one point (laughs) and have that kind of um, grace. Mm. Um, and I cover reality TV. Like it's my career. I know. I know what this this is. You do what your job. Are. You made for it. <laughs> yes. Thanks. So my first question is that the season started with you and Nay kissing. Yeah. It seems like you clicked, and then we had that love triangle with Demi. Uh, yeah. We thought Nay was a. Uh, pretty much a messy one on how she handled all of that um what are your thoughts on it obviously (laughs) obviously we weren't seeing what was going on among like amongst the girls in the materia like obviously we we couldn't watch anything so when I watched the show when when production had first shown it to us I was like what this is what Nay was saying in like the tea room I was gagged because I thought she was just like into me and she was, you know, she wasn't, she wasn't really that interested in them. I know they had that conversation by the pool, mm-hmm. um, but I thought, you know, we're solid, da 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 da. And then to be fair though, I did love Demi. Like Demi was a real one and I feel like she did not get an opportunity to shine on the show. And I'm mm-hmm. so mad she didn't. So 
And I, I kind of get like why, because me and Nate were a bit, we, we weren't really communicating much. Like you probably didn't see it on the show. We weren't, we were always separated from each other. All the couples have kind of like found, found their dynamic. Me and Nate, were, we weren't like that. So mm. Demi was like, okay, they're a little bit on the rocks. Let me see what's going on with them. And I rate her for it. You know, you got to explore everyone. That's the that's the concept of the show. You have to explore different relationships. For sure. So, although I saw her flirting with with Nay, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I kind of respect it because it's only like day one or two. But I was like, true. Oh, <laughs> well, we later on here, I think you bring up to Nay like there's not a lot of communication going. Yeah. And that's when we started getting confused. So what was those early days like? So I was looking around and all these couples were really like, you know, it was com like the communication was coming from both sides. And I felt like, okay, I put my work in, but Nay is staying distant. And I don't want to be that girl who pushes too hard. Mm -hmm. So I kind of kept my distance and it wasn't working. So then I kind of just pulled her and I was like, what's going on? Um, I want to work on our communication, da 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 da. And after that, it kind of got better. But okay. I think that's just in Nay's like nature, just to not be completely out there, and she kind mm -hmm. of expects like other girls to make the move on her. I think that that's as she said in the show, she's kind of used to girls like coming up to her, and you know. Yeah. <laughs> but if if it's my responsibility, then screw it, I'll do it. Mm. All right, I am so jealous because you guys had an astrology dinner. Oh, don't even get me started about that dinner. That dinner was actually a shit show. <laughs> I mean, it was, but just the concept. I want to take that concept. I want it to be a staple of the show. I'm an astrology girly. I'm sorry. And I know you are too. Yeah. I'm all earth, by the way. I'm literally all earth. I'm Taurus sun, Taurus moon, Virgo rising. And my mm -hmm. Venus is in Taurus as well. Wow. I have so much Taurus in my chat. It's insane. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people know that, but... Well, Taurus is also Venetian. It's also about beauty. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so we're just, we're vibing. <laughs> Sometimes I can be a little bit, I'm stubborn, but I'm indecisive. Like it's, mm. it's a mess, it's a whole mess. But I have too much Taurus for my own liking. So at the astrology dinner, everyone's supposed to be sitting yeah. for their sign. The big thing though that happens at this is that you ask a question to Leisha and Abby. Oh. Um, <laughs> what would you be, who would you be with if it wasn't with your partner? Now, I don't, have you ever watched Couple to Throuple? Uh, yeah, I've seen it, I've seen it, yeah. Yeah, because Maxie and Ash was on as guest. And if you watched it, they have a very similar situation. <laughs> it felt like they brought the queers in late and then was like, stir it up. So Maxie has been the person to ask the, the hot question at the table. Maxie also said on the recap, yeah, a producer's in her ear, <laughs> but she got set up. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be like, ah! I can't, I'm not feeling well. <laughs> oh my God. So I'm not the only one who had this problem. Say less. Oh yeah. So let's let's talk <laughs> about that. No, 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 because I'm I'm convinced. I'm I shouldn't probably be saying this, but I'm convinced that like production had a target on my back. Cause mm -hmm. I was people have labeled labeled me as the shit stirrer. Yeah. For obvious reasons. Like watching it back now, I'm like, oh. Priya, what were you doing? You you clearly come across like someone who wants trouble, who wants gossip, who wants drama. But really and truly, I was just getting told, like, mm -hmm. you wanna have a conversation with this person about this? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, fine. And like one time, um, I really, really, really got peer pressured into talking to a certain someone, <coughs> Hannah. And mm. like, I said, no. I was like, no, no, I don't want to talk to Hannah. Like, obviously, because I had my reservations about about Hannah when she first came in and like mm -hmm. that cosmopolitan thing. And like, obviously me and Hannah, we're super close now. Like she's, yeah. an amazing, she's an amazing woman. But at the time I was like, yeah, I had my reservations and they could hear it in the mic. And they were like, go talk to her, go talk to her, go talk to her. And I'm like, no, because I don't want to stay in trouble. And then they kind of like, when I, oh, do you want to have a conversation with Hannah the next morning? And that's when I did. And 
we kind of ironed out the creases mm -hmm. then. But yeah, a lot of it is a bit like chess. You kind of, and you know, mm -hmm. the players and they move you where they want you to go, so. Yeah, what advice would you give to other, if we do get a second season, or just in general, queer people who find themselves on a reality show, what mm -hmm. advice would it be when you feel like you're being put in that hot spot? <laughs> I would say be emotionally ready, be strong enough to say no, because we all know that no is a complete sentence and mm -hmm. you don't have to do anything you don't want to do, but be prepared for the drama, be prepared to like handle yourself well, because sometimes I really let my emotions take over me and like I was on D for quite a bit of it because yeah. I, I had never been put in that situation before. Mm -hmm. um, so I came across poorly. And I was, I literally, I'm going to admit, I really was not emotionally ready to be on that show. Um, to be I, fair, I don't know if anyone's emotionally ready because no one has like reality TV training. <laughs> like that's not no, a school. <laughs> like, I just not, and like, obviously you forget the cameras are there. You completely yes. forget they're there. You just think it's like a normal social interaction when it's really not. But mm -hmm. I would highly recommend those who want to go on the show just a, don't be defensive. Like, B, really consider other people's feelings. Don't, um, I don't know, don't be impulsive with your emotions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but also be yourself. It's kind yeah. of hard to do all those four things at the same time. It's yeah. literally impossible. Like, you're, like, people are gonna have opinions of you. People are either gonna like you or not like you. Mm -hmm. Just, it's hard. It's really hard. And like, I didn't realize this when coming out that I thought I, I was like, okay, I, I think I handled myself quite well. Other people had a lot of different opinions. <laughs> so I was just like, okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, okay. Th there's a reason why like the tactics in making reality TV are there because like without you, <laughs> there were a lot of like, juicy moments we wouldn't have gotten so it's yeah, just no like you. no hate to priya we do not over at black by reality you know what I'm over. if you want to give hate send hate but like just don't do too much don't do too much don't send hate don't yeah. send hate i'll say that i'm because open to criticism yes feedback which i think you took some like it was so funny oh, I think some. <laughs> yes you did because what was it the first dumping or whatever i think people accused you of not being sensitive it was like jo georgia and kara they were really mad about whoever went home and mm. then later on you were talking to hannah of like you're being a bit too happy about the person we just lost i don't know if it was like fiorenza and yeah. and i said in the recap i was like i think she's learning <laughs> like this this is gross <laughs> no one called Hannah out on the fact that she was just like blase about the fact that, you know, Fiorenza mm -hmm. just ran. like obviously she was new. She was yeah. new. So he didn't really have any emotional connection to any of them. And I think that was just my, yeah. my you know, protective side coming out of a fee. But um yeah, I just sometimes I felt like there were double standards. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it because this is something I mentioned. Now, mm. first of all, you're an icon no matter what because you came on as the only Sikh Punjabi lesbian yes. on that show. I was very much aware of that. And sometimes it did feel like somehow you and Nay were like versus all of these white lesbians. Yeah. Which sucks. It, it sucks it representation really time, <laughs> like representation wise. So, yeah. Was I race think, ever in your mind in the dynamic that you had? I think it was more in my mind once the show would come out mm -hmm. and the edit mm -hmm. because I kind of saw how, like, dynamically, I saw how things were, like, how, you know, some people were isolated more than others, um, some people were more lenient on others um and even the public as well mm -hmm. um i feel like some girls get a lot more popularity mm -hmm. um 
based on their race. Um, and even the girls on the show, the women of color on the show did like, didn't get their time because mm -hmm. I feel like the women of color on that show had like the biggest and brightest personalities. And I feel like they should have had more of an opportunity to to shine. Like I'm like Thea, especially her time was too oh and Demi, Thea and Demi, their time was way too short. Like it was. It they're was such beautiful souls and they literally bring such light into a room. Like when you spend time with them, they're amazing. But yeah, yeah like the the reception um once the show was aired it was very telling and I think it's mainly because of the audience as well yes when I think about who's watching the show I'm thinking let's look at the demographic here and it's not a lot of you know queer South Asian women watching who you know it's it's hard it's hard but yeah Where you know what I've noticed ever since it's come out on Hulu I feel like Americans have been better they've been kinder yes they've been kinder <laughs> okay good 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 i'm like please say better um, please brits are so brutal and my wife was saying this as well she was like don't worry when it comes out in america like the americans are gonna be a lot nicer towards it but brits are horrible because people were even commenting on my wife and i'm like why are they all so mean it's crazy I mean, there's there's people who are out of pocket all over the world, but that's a little bit <laughs> heartwarming to me to at least hear because I I have felt kind of alone in being a fan of this, and now I'm trying to like get more people <laughs> to like, yeah, yeah. and especially POC. Um, of course, black is like our main focus, but I I think it's just all so so very important. Um, yeah. So yeah. Kind of hard to tap into like a queer South Asian community because we're so like far and few between. Mm -hmm. And like, I really want to find my people. I know I've received certain messages like saying like, oh, as a queer South Asian, how do you come out to your parents? Or how do you deal with it? Mm -hmm. And how do you like deal with religion and all of this? And I want to be a spokesperson for that. But I also feel like, because I did like a crazy thing on national television, I feel like I don't have the credibility to do, do that. Do it. Do it's it. Like the syndrome. Do it. So, do it. But if if women are going to come to me, I would happily give them advice, no, no matter what. And I'm very proud that they have the courage to come out, especially because like being in a in a POC like family environment, it can be so hard, especially with parents. Um, I remember I was so nervous to come out to my dad. I was wrapping myself um mm -hmm. i did it and it was completely fine and he ended up on a bloody lesbian reality tv show I know. <laughs> it's called growth growth <laughs> nice nice no i uh, that's really lovely i think you should do it i think also something that i would hope would be better for us is that as queer people like we're not held to like the heteronormative standard like we're already breaking the rules being yeah. ourselves mm -hmm. so it's like why why punish like queer women and femmes for like still figuring it out i was painfully aware watching the show that all y'all were young <laughs> i called you guys as babies all the time which we'll talk i know it is. I, know it is. I was like damn am i that young yes <laughs> Yes, and that's a good thing. You have so much more life to live. That's fine. But Not it's to learn. <laughs> it's all true. It's all true. So everyone said that night of the astrology dinner that you guys were the strongest couple, which did take us a little bit by surprise because we're like, what's going on with Georgia and Kara? Yeah. <laughs> like, See, so there's so much controversy around that. And I think it's because they saw more of Kara and Georgia like really being intimate mm -hmm. on screen but when we would go for lunches right when we would like stop recording we'd just be eating like me and they were very were very close mm. would pick up on that and like so it was like the behind the scenes things that the girls saw that they picked up on and then Kara and Georgia were having like communication problems as well mm. behind the scenes that weren't shown on TV and that's where it came from. You had the tough task of sending someone home um, and you chose Abby and Leisha. 
the girls were mad at me during the elimination because when we were told, you know, we had to get rid of a couple, mm -hmm. me, when I feel awkward, I'm like smiling. I laugh. <laughs> I'm like, and yeah. this, you got told to go over to a bench, like 20 feet away from the girls. They could That's see- terrible. Us. I know it was torture. So I'm just like, you can even like, name. What do we do? And they took it as like this, so insensitive. They're just laughing in our face, and I'm like, no, this is literally just how I deal with an awkward situation. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking that me and they are gonna get like a little date. No, far from it. Nah, nah. That's but that's like, and I, I don't know. I feel like. I feel like younger people do get very defensive about the age thing because it already came up. But like these casting producers, they pick young people for a reason. No, but what was like what threw me was the fact that Georgia was twenty eight. She was the oldest. And she like, is. <laughs> yeah, she's the oldest. And like when yeah, when I heard her like make certain comments, I'm like, Georgia, what? <laughs> Like, what comments? Like, for example, um, you know when I had walked off after after the Leisha and Abby mm -hmm. um, elimination? Mm -hmm. Her calling me dramatic. I, I wasn't being dramatic. I was just removing myself from a situation that yeah. in, in which I felt uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I, I felt like I was being a little bit targeted. And mm -hmm. as well, I was like, why was I getting all the heat? Why did Nay get none of the heat? Mm. To this day, I'm confused about that. Maybe because I was more vocal, in my opinion. And Nay was kind of like, you know, she's laid back. She just takes the back seat and things. But I'm like, girl, come on. We did have a conversation about it, I think. Um, and I said, you know, can you, can you back me up a little mm -hmm. bit? Yeah. Um, but that wasn't shown. And there was there was just a lot that wasn't shown that would add more content. A lot I would love to know like the criteria that production looks for um, in regards to these shows. I would mm -hmm. love to know what the specificity that like why why do you want this specific person on the show? Did you pick this person specifically for that person, mm -hmm. or did you just want a certain personality mm -hmm. in the show? I really want to know. Me too. Okay. We yes. had Amy who was talking about what her type was. She was so very clear. That type doesn't come in until like episode seven. And it's like you want her to struggle for what? She's doing all these like um, things to like. I'm fun for fam. I'm fun for fam. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and it's like, please give her a femme so we can move on. I hope like they genuinely learn from certain mistakes as well. Just like, you know, I really want to see more diversity. Yeah. Um, and I want to see my, a more diverse audience as well. More, mm -hmm. just just so the girlies can get their chance. I hate mm. it out in my bikini because yeah. obviously you had really, you know, you had slimmer people and I'd always kind of be comparing myself to them. I'm just like, you know what, I'm just, I'm a little bit more thick than there. Like I got a bit of, I got a bit of, you know, softer, softer features around my belly. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was, that was the thing I was mainly worried about, about the show. Um, no. But then now it's my, it's the way I dealt with things, which I completely regret. <laughs> I would do it so differently if I were to go back in time. Really? What would you do differently? Um, think about my words before I said them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would, um, I don't know, approach things more maturely. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't be as defensive as I was. Okay, so Eva put you on the spot talking about Hannah behind her back. Uh, mm -hmm. What is your relationship like with Eva today? Me and, me and Eva's relationship is great. Like we, we're solid. Like we don't talk to each other often, but when we do, it's like, it's completely chill. I've not had any beef with her mm -hmm. um, since. I remember, especially for, I, I think it was the, the premiere. Um, she literally came into my room and we were just talking, just chilling. And like, honestly, she's a lovely, lovely woman. Like, I think that was just, you no. Know, um, <laughs> yeah. being messy being messy but right. other than that it was like yeah we're chill we're chill it's 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 under the rug now so 
Hi guys, sorry to say that I had to split this interview up into two parts. So if you want to hear the part where me and Priya talk about that final kiss off, the reunion, the update on her relationship status, then you're going to want to go over to part two in the same playlist or the same podcast feed. Thank you. Bye.